Thank you, Madam Speaker. There was a, there was an, I don't know if you want to call it an allegation or insinuation that the only time I speak to condemn violence is when it's violence that I don't agree with. Uh, I, I want to be clear about something. I condemn all acts of political violence. I have been very consistent on that. So have my colleagues across the aisle. Great example. The first time I ever spoke here on the House floor was in support of a resolution rejecting white supremacy. And I talked at length at that time of the Tree of Life synagogue shooting that occurred in Squirrel Hill, Pennsylvania. Uh, as you know, I'm from the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Uh, I have a lot of friends that, that actually attend that synagogue. And again, the first time I spoke on the House floor was, con was to condemn violence. So I just want the record to reflect uh, my consistency on this issue and the consistency of my colleagues. I wish my friends on the, on the left would condemn violence that the left has done. It seems that they cherry pick their own outrage. But let's just get back to economics. Again, there was this, uh, there was this notion floated that inflation is just, is not as bad here as it is internationally and this is a global problem. Again, it's a global problem because we're the world's largest GDP, we're exporting inflation. But even with that said, inflation is far worse here than it is in the de developed world. Our inflation by reference is 9.1%. Japan is at 2.4%. The UK is at 9.1%. They're the same as we are. Italy is at 8%. Canada, 7.7%. France, 5.8%. Again, all those countries I listed, I listed those nations of the developed world, have inflation that are, that's lower than where we are, with the exception of the UK, which is the same. In Brazil, I should say this about Brazil, it's at 1% in Brazil. So this idea that everybody is experiencing inflation and that we have it easier is just not accurate when you look at the numbers. Now, I gave a list of what I would cut from the budget. Uh, it wasn't an exhaustive list and neither is this, but I just want to give a few more examples. $75 million is allocated for public housing energy efficiency and climate resilience upgrades. That could be cut, there's 75 million right there. Funding for the FDA, and let's not, let's not forget, the FDA was the agency that failed to prevent the infant formula crisis. The Democrats are rewarding the FDA with a 10% increase. That can be cut. And what's so insulting about the 10% increase to the FDA is at the same time, Democrats want to increase the funding in the FDA, again, the agency that led to the baby formula shortage. You have farmers and ranchers that are struggling to make ends meet and to actually harvest food because of the rising fuel cost and, and fertilizer cost, and there's no increase to them. And I think one of the most outrageous items that can be cut is the $90 million that's going to Presidio Park, a park that is in an incredibly affluent area of San Francisco, arguably one of the wealthiest areas in the entire United States, yet that park is getting $90 million when those around that park can fund it. And again, what's so insulting about this is we're not even giving allocations to places like Yellowstone and Yosemite that are actually national parks. So that's just some of the areas I would cut. But with that, I reserve.